is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abundant in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and His mercy is over all that He has made. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear Him. He also hears their cry and saves them. Hello children, it's your science teacher, Mrs. Reynolds again, and today we're going to be learning about sharks. And there's so much intricate information about sharks, I just can't seem to remember it all. So I hope you don't mind if I read this information to you today, and then we'll do our experiment, because sharks are awesome, and I don't want you to miss anything about them. So sharks, I don't know if you're aware, they are considered to be fish and they live in the ocean, of course. Sharks do not live in the fresh water. There are all sorts of different kinds of sharks. Have you heard of a hammerhead shark? With the funny wedges on the sides of their head? They are not born like that. They are born with just a plain round nose and as they grow up, that bump gets bigger and bigger. And God made every shark special for the thing that it needs to be done. The other shark I'll tell you about is a tiger shark. Tiger sharks can eat almost anything, including poisonous fish, and they will not get sick. Another shark is a whale shark. I don't know if any of you have heard of them. They are the biggest fish in the whole wide ocean, even bigger than a whale, which is pretty awesome, as a whale is not a fish. Nurse sharks can use their pectoral fins. Those are the fins that are on their chest and they can actually walk along the bottom of the ocean. Isn't that amazing? And God made everyone special. There's a zebra shark and he only hunts at night. Hmm, 
That confuses me, because an actual zebra, he hunts during the day, not at night. So I wonder why they call them a zebra shark. Maybe it's because of the way they look. There's also a leopard shark, and he eats animals that live in the mud. God gave it special sensors on the front of his snout so that he can feel, he can sense the animals that are located way deep down in the mud because God made special animals to live in the mud too, of course. There's also the blue shark, and you know what? He can swim 60 miles an hour. That's as fast as your car going down the highway. Could you imagine a shark swimming alongside you as you're driving the car down the highway? That's pretty cool. And there's also one that I know you all have heard of, the great white shark. Did you know that we actually have great white sharks here in Maine? They live more in southern Maine and off the coast, but we do have them here. And they're called the rulers of the sea. Now let's talk about how God designed sharks so they don't sink in water. You can see my huge tub in front of me. It's full of water. And we're going to learn how fish and sharks do not sink in the water. Because, hey, if they sunk in the water, they wouldn't be able to swim, would they? So sharks are called buoyant. That's our science word for today. And it means that they don't sink even though they're really heavy. A shark can be as heavy as a limo, which is like the size of three cars. That's a heavy shark and a heavy fish. Can you imagine if they all just sank to the bottom of the ocean and weren't able to swim as easily through the ocean? Yikes, but they don't. Because even though they weigh a lot, God made them special so that they can float. The first thing really cool about a shark is feel your wrist. You could actually see your knobby bone right there. Your fingers have bones. They're hard, aren't they? Bones are heavy. Sharks do not have any bones. Other fish all have bones. We'll learn in a minute how they can float. Now feel your ears, the outer part of your ears. You can move them. But that's cartilage. Also, the tip of your nose, you can feel it feels funny in there. That's cartilage too. Cartilage is not bone and it's very light and that helps them to float. The second thing that God did, he gave sharks specially shaped fins so that they can, their side fins act like wings in the water and they lift the shark up in the water and their tail is powerful so it powers them through the water. The third thing that the sharks did, which we are learning today, is they gave them a super special liver. Now, humans have livers too, and it takes up, oh, let me check my notes here. It's the biggest organ in our body, but in a shark, the liver takes up 90% of its body. So that means only just a little bit of their body is not a liver. It goes all along their back. And their liver is very, very oily, and that helps them to float. Okay, now for our experiment. I have my sharks here. And here is shark number one. You can see, maybe, his fierce face. He is completely full of water. If you want to do this at home, in order to get no bubbles in this jar, you have to put it under the water and tilt it up so all the bubbles float out, and then put your cover up. Now, this is full of water. Do you think this will sink or float? Let's find out. I'm putting it very slowly and carefully. Mm, is it floating? Is it sinking? Aha! It sank all the way to the bottom, didn't it? <clears throat> Sorry. Shark two. Now what did I say was in his liver? It's oil. Very, very oily. And here's my second shark. And he is completely full of oil. Do you think he's going to sink or float? This is also using another term you'll learn this week. It's called dense. If it's dense, that means it's going to be heavier than water. But if it isn't as dense as water, it will float. Oh, I don't know. Do I dare? Let's see. Shark number two. Woo! I thought he was going to sink, but he didn't. He is floating. Let's try it again. Push him down. Still floating. One more time. Down it goes. Definitely floating. So oil helps a shark to float. And how big did I say his liver was? 90% of his body. 
This is one of the reasons that a shark can float because his liver is very, very oily. Okay, now, there's also another thing in the ocean. What did we say sharks were? They are fish. But sharks are not made like other fish. Other fish have bones. Sharks have what? Cartilage. Fish have bones and they also have, this is my funny little fish right here. They have something called a swim bladder. Now if you ever go fishing out in the lakes or anything, and if you're gonna keep your fish to eat it, open it up carefully and you'll see it's a clear pouch and it's full of gas. I have air, my fish is half full of water, so the top bubble is the air. Now let's see, do you think this fish will float or sink? The one full of water sunk. So let's find out, I'm gonna drop him fast. Wing. He floats, doesn't he? So a shark has a very oily liver, so he floats. A fish has a swim bladder, which is on the top of his body and he can actually adjust how much gas is in his swim bladder. So if he wants to go down lower, he lets some gas out and he can swim part way in the water. If he wants to be near the top, he just puts in more gas because that's the way God made him so he can do that and he can float nearer the top of the water. Aren't fish interesting? I think it's fascinating how God made them special just so that they can live in the ocean. And if your parents allow you, you can do this at home also, but make sure you're outside so you don't make a mess with the water. And don't take a bath in the tub, please. All right, that's all for today. Bye-bye. There's a place you gotta see, a land of discovery, mystery island. Come on! So, Detective, how are you going to find him when you don't even know what he looks like? My trained instincts will tell me, as always. Perhaps someday you will understand. Hmm. Oh, so they are all hiding, is that it? Well, we have ways of dealing with that. You check over there, I will look over here. Yes, Detective. Hmm. One is there, one is there. Hmm. Don't see. <gasps> oh, the easel again. Oh, this. Hmm. Detective! What brings you to Buccaneer Bay again? We are looking for Mr. Gina Patel in town National Antiquities Safe, otherwise known as this snake. Oh! Yes, from the Pirate Museum robbery. And how do you know that? Because you told us yesterday. Do you remember that? Of course, I remember. I was just testing you. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you at Buccaneer Bay? Surely you don't think Gino Patel is here, do you? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. And that is why I must leave no stone unturned. So, may I please see a guest list? Yes, of course, Detective. And now the interrogation begins. Watch closely and you will learn something. Yes, Detective. The briefcase, please. Oh! <clears throat> heavy. I can't even... <clears throat> um... Detective. Yes, what is it? Uh, someone's coming. Oh, excellent. Our first victims. I mean suspects. You know, I think we're finally starting to get the hang of this uh, treasure See, hunting thing. <laughs> I told you it was going to be fun. Oh, yes, you hey, did. Maybe we could become professional treasure hunters. I wouldn't go that far. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, we didn't see you standing there. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I am Detective Naklu from the Mystery Island Police Department, and I need to ask you a few questions. Really? Did we do something wrong? Yeah. We shall see. Please, have a seat. Mm. 
What's that? A lie detector machine that detects lies. I don't like this, Everett. Don't worry, we have nothing to fear. So, ill is how it works. If you tell me the truth, nothing will happen. But, if you tell me something that is not true, the machine will detect it and will make a buzzing noise. Allow me to demonstrate. I am Detective Naklu. See, obviously a true statement, so no passing. But if I say two plus two equals seven. See? Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> I'll bet you've caught some big time criminals with that, huh? Indeed we have. <laughs> oh, but uh, let's move along. <laughs> So, who wants to go first? I guess I will. Are you sure? Yes, I just want to get this over with. Hm. All right, let us begin. What is your name? Emily Richardson. Hm. Write that down. Yes, Detective. So, Miss Richardson. Have you ever been to the Byron Museum? Um, I, I didn't even know there was a pirate museum. <sighs> Have you ever seen the Captain Hook exhibit at the Pirate Museum? Um, I said I've never been to the Pirate Museum, so no. So I detect that you have never been to the Pilot Museum, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay, now we are getting somewhere. Hmm. Oh, it is me. Oh. Can't even get the phone over. Oh. Stanley takes a call. I am busy. Yes, detective. Hello, this is Stanley. Oh, Commissioner. Um, no, she can't take the call right now. She's uh, busy with an interrogation. Uh, 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 of course, I I'll ask her. Um, Detective, do you know what happened to the Commissioner's birthday cake? He said it was missing. Uh, no, of course not. Ah. Uh... Well, come to think of it, I may have seen someone taking it. Okay, I ate it. You ate it? The entire thing? Well, I was just trying to protect the commissioner. It, it looked like it had been poisoned. That will conclude the interrogation. Thank you for your time. It has been most helpful. D Detective. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> oh, you two are back. Did the detective leave already? Yes. Uh, yeah, you just missed her. <laughs> oh well, doesn't matter. So, did you finish the second leg? Yes, we did. Great. How did it go? Better. I think we're finally starting to get the hang of it. Good. Did you find the artifact? Oh, yeah. I've, I've got it right here. Wait. Um, shouldn't you call Mr. Henson? Um, no. No, I don't think that will be necessary. We can just fill him in on it later. Look at that. A stone heart. Wow. Let's see what the fact sheet has to say about it. Well, one thing I know for sure, it's heavy. <laughs> okay, so it says that the heart was crafted in 1437 by the Renaissance sculptor wow. Rudius. Wow. Mm. That would certainly make it valuable, wouldn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it was sculpted to commemorate the loving heart of King Destrian of Theramar. His generosity and acts of kindness were legendary, mm. especially to the widows and orphans of his kingdom. Mm. 
Yeah. I'd sure like to hear more about him. Yes, I would too. But do you know who that reminds me of? Who? God. As yeah. much as King Destrian might have loved his people, no king has ever loved his people as much as God has, not even close. Really? How so? Well, the Bible says that God is perfectly holy and just, and he created us to live in harmony with him. But like I was saying yesterday, Adam and Eve rebelled against God. And as a result, sin was ushered into the world. Is that the curse you were talking about? Yes, very good. See, I was listening. Good, because what I'm telling you is so important. See, as descendants of Adam and Eve, we have all participated in this sin. And so every single one of us deserves God's punishment. But if I'm a good person, I'll go to heaven, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm afraid it's not that simple. What? You see, the Bible says that no man is good, not even one. Hmm. That's because God's standard of goodness is so different from our own. Hmm. Then what do we do? Well, that's the problem. There's nothing that we can do. The penalty for sin is just too big. Only God can fix the problem. Hmm. But thankfully, he did. Well, how? Mm -hmm. By sending his son, Jesus Christ. Hmm. He came to earth 2,000 years ago. He lived the perfect life that you and I could never possibly live. Hmm. And then he died on a cross in your place and in my place as a substitute. And then three days later, he rose from the dead to prove that the penalty for sin had been satisfied. So, in other words, God paid the penalty himself. That's how much he loves us. Wow. I've never heard it explained like that before. <laughs> yes, this is called the gospel. But hmm. it does require a response. Hmm. We have to turn away from our sin and trust in what Jesus did for us. Hmm. And then God forgives all of our sins and accepts us into his family. Hmm. You've certainly given us a lot to think about. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Oh, sorry for interrupting. Um, hey, can I talk to you, like, now? Sorry, can you excuse me, please? Sure. What's wrong? I found something! What do you mean you found something? Come here, you've got to see this!
Mystery Island, day four. That's right, today is day four, and I'm so glad you're here each day with us, Rever, for all of the boys and girls, and they've been learning that God is Emmanuel. Emmanuel? What is that? That means God with us. And you know what? God offers us eternal life when we trust in Jesus, his son, and ask him to forgive us of our sins and become our savior. Huh, that is really cool. Yes, it is. And you know what? Our animal friend Jam, the immortal jellyfish, reminds us of that. An immortal jellyfish? Oh, look at him. He's really cool. Yes, he is. And jellyfish are fascinating creatures. And you know what? They really are not fish. They're not? No, nope. they don't have any spine, no bones at all. Oh, they're like me. Yes, <laughs> something like you. And they're, they can be very tiny, like uh, the size of your pinky. Oh, that is really small. Yes, it is. And when they're old, Rever, guess what? What? They never actually die. They don't? No, nope, not like us. They never actually die unless, yeah, unless they're eaten by, you know, a predator or they get a disease or something like that. Uh, that's the only way that they die. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yes, it is. And we don't know how old the oldest jellyfish is. Um, they could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. Oh, ah, I didn't know that. And then just look at the jellyfish tentacles. Oh, yes, yeah, suction cuts all over. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Um, some of them have 90 tentacles. Whoa, 90? Yes, 90. And uh, that helps to uh, uh, capture their food, you know, like, like fish eggs and things like that. Oh, yeah, it will suction right on. That's right. And um, do you know, uh, Rever, when they eat? Uh, now, you, you see the jellyfish and how it's big, right? Yeah. Well, um, where do you think the mouth of the jellyfish is? Do you think it's in the top, the middle, or the bottom? Oh, the top of the head, like ours. <laughs> no, it's not in the top. In the bottom? No, nope, not in the bottom. In the center? Yep, their mouth is in the center of the jellyfish. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yes, it is. And um, you know what? They're called hitchhikers, jellyfish are. How come? because they can actually suction on to the bottom of the boat and go all over the world. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yes, you know, Jam reminds us that people who are God's children can live forever with God in heaven by trusting in Jesus as their Savior. Yeah, and there's no death in heaven, is there? No, nope, none at all. Oh, good. Hey, boys and girls, I hope you know Jesus as your Savior and you're trusting in him. Come back tomorrow. We have one more day. Bye. Emmanuel. God is with us. Our lesson today was focused on the fact that Jesus Christ came to earth to save us from our sins. That he didn't just die on the cross, he rose again. And you can know our Savior. If you don't, take the time today to get to know him. Also, did you find the words today? Were you able to decode them? Let's go on with our questions for today. What kind of life does God give us? When Jam the immortal jellyfish gets old, he never naturally does what? Do you sense a theme? Is the mouth of a jellyfish located at the top, center, or bottom of its body? Hopefully you know the answers. Don't forget to submit them on the private Facebook page so that you can be entered to win one of the prizes. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for coming to earth to walk as a man, to live your life with us, to be with us, to die on the cross for us and to rise again for us. God, we just thank you so much for your plan of salvation to us. Lord, help us today to remember that and to pass it on to others, to be a light to others today and always. 
In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Until I see you tomorrow, day five of Mystery Island, have a good rest of the day and see you then. Thank you.